Greetings, in this video we are going to look at the creation as propounded by the mantras of the Rig Veda, the Rigs which are compiled as the Nasadiya Suktam or Nasadasit Suktam. So let us look at the modern theory of the Big Bang. So to put it really simple, the Big Bang theory states as to how a sheer magnificent force initiated the expansion of the universe across its timeline. All elements, matter, atoms which constitute the star systems, galaxies, planets initiated only after this force which they call the bang, the big bang and therefore the very name given to the theory. Right? So the Big Bang theory states that before this bang, there were no atom stars form or any structure to existence. That simply refers to something which is beyond logic or mental perception. Now, the first verse of the Nasadiya Suktam actually speaks about what was before the initiation of creation. Right, so it goes as Om Nasada Sin No Sada Sid Tadani Im Nasid Rajo No Vyoma Paro Yate Kima Vari Vakku Hakas Yasharman Nam Am Bakima Sid Kahananga Biram. This is a very very enlightening pose. In fact, to me, if one just meditates on this very mantra, he can just dissolve into death. So it states that it's very interesting because it just puts that there was neither existence or non-existence. Right? And then it of course goes on to state that there were no winds, no worlds, no five elements. But the significant point is. There was neither existence or non-existence. So you cannot say that there was non-existence before creation or can you actually say that there was existence before creation. It is just something which your mind can't comprehend. So we are not saying that there it was something. Neither are we saying that there was nothing. right? So the word nothing is not an accurate term to quote that which was before the Big Bang. So it is like thinking of a new color we have to just surrender everything and stop using the mind to perceive creation itself now the other verse which is very much interesting right which actually literally talks about the very big bang the very force of initiation now the verse goes as so this verse actually speaks about a force a beam which just went off which just traversed in all directions and with such might with such great might with such glory so a sheer force which actually traveled and spread out in all directions now the force initiating force described in the big bang theory actually talks about the universe which expanded so vastly that 10 to the power of negative 35 seconds after the Big Bang, the universe expanded in a factor of 10 to the power of 50. So that is extremely um, vigorous, right? A very vigorous reaction, right? So these two verses, there are many other verses in the... Nasadiya Sutam, but these are the two significant ones which I feel, right? So it literally talks, these two verses alone 
can just conclude the very big bang and the that i can't even use a word that which was before the big bang which is not nothingness neither was it something it is just beyond our comprehension and this is what we perceive as brahman and this is what we are really because this is our state prior to creation that was what we were initially and we are actually and it's just about realization and this is why as we go to the conclusion as the upanishad the four vedas actually propound the mahavakyas the mahavakyas are like the ultimatum of the vedas given in each upanishad belonging to each veda which simply quotes you as consciousness you as atma you as that so that consciousness that which you refer to as atma that is what was prior to the big bang and which is after the big bang after the creation and this is why we have two terms two sounds in sanskrit which actually denote this we use the word the sounds vishvam and jagat now these two are loosely translated to world itself but they have a very huge significance now the term jagat actually refers to something which is born and that which dies at a particular time ja comes from jananam which is also janma and gat which is going so that which comes which is born and which is goes it applies to the observable universe galaxies stars systems all these are born and they die they go right so vishva means everything that which is all pervasive and which is beyond the influence of time all the deities of our vedic vedic culture denote that which is under the roof of vishva for example if we look at the ganapati upanishad of the atharva veda we quote lord ganesha as he who is beyond time tvam kalatraya titah so beyond everything and this is what which is there always beyond time right it's just that it creation the materialistic universe came to play after the big bang whereas the consciousness the absolute consciousness or the brahman is the underlying core which is always there through which may, uh, the five elements play the game of the universe that we observe and it is our role our dharma to go inwards and realize that we our true nature is that underlying core consciousness and our bodies our mind our role on this planet is just the play of the creation part of the creation in real the core is that which is true so this concludes that the way the vedic tradition looks at creation is very deep 